We're not going to be opening today with our normal call to worship. We're not going to have our normal time of singing, although we are going to sing a song together in just a moment. Um, We're not even going to have a traditional sermon. I know for some of you, that is going to be music to your ears, right? Thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. Um, We wanted to take today, set aside some time to simply pray together, to have a time of guided prayer. There are a couple of reasons that we're doing this. Number one, Kevin is on vacation, which, and a lot of our other musicians are out of town and have other things going on. We're unable to help out, and we're, we're so glad that they are able to get away and be on vacation. Um, but this is actually also something that we have wanted to do for quite some time. We've tossed around this idea for a couple of years now of, because we rarely have the opportunity as a larger body to just spend time praying together. We do have our midweek prayer service, but it's in the middle of the day. And uh, for a lot of folks, that time frame doesn't work out. So we wanted to have a time where we joined together as a larger body to pray together. We're going to do that today. We also thought this would be a great opportunity to, for those who haven't been able to ever attend our midweek prayer service, you are going to get sort of a window into what that looks like. Um, We're going to be following the guide that you've picked up. This is the same guide that we follow every week at our midweek prayer service. And we've actually been using this exact guide for over six years now with just a few very minor alterations. Um, We're calling this a time of guided prayer or directed or instructed prayer. So we'll be working through this prayer guide and then we'll pause for throughout for a few moments of instruction or teaching about what exactly some of these prayers are about, why we incorporate them, why we think they are an important part of what we do. So for some of you, this is going to seem very familiar. I know I have, and I know others have also incorporated this prayer guide into, uh, as a part of our daily prayer routine as well. So a lot of these prayers are going to be very familiar. Even if you've never attended our midweek prayer service, you've likely heard or been exposed to a lot of these prayers as we try to incorporate them in our Sunday morning liturgy as well from time to time. So hopefully it it doesn't all seem too unfamiliar to anybody. Um, And if it does, um, that's okay. I I hope you will be able to just enter this moment, um, even if you're just listening to what folks around you are saying, that you will be able to quiet your mind, calm your heart, maybe even still your voice for a while, uh, and, and hopefully this will be a time of genuine encounter with our God. That, that's our prayer this morning. Um, so we are going to dismiss the kids in just, just a moment. We're going to, before we do, we're going to sing the doxology a cappella. I am not going to lead that, okay? I've actually in, asked Steve Long, if you want to go ahead and come up, Steve. Steve is going to lead us. We're going to sing through the doxology twice. Um, And you can use this microphone if you want. I think it should be on. And if not, I think you can project probably. Well, I'm just saying. (laughs) Um, So we're going to sing the doxology. We will then say a prayer for our kids, dismiss them, and then we'll pray together. Sound good? Steve, if you'd lead us.
Lord, we do lift our voices, joining our hearts and our voices together to sing your praise, joining all of creation this morning, singing praise to you as our creator and sustainer. We now pray for our children. We thank you for these blessings. We thank you for their lives. Each of these young individuals who bring so much joy into our lives, so much joyful noise into this congregation, we thank you for them. We pray that you would bless them, that you would reveal your love to them. We pray for those who will be instructing them in the next few minutes. We pray for special blessings upon them as well. We ask these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Kids, you can be dismissed to Kids Church if you have checked in. We love you guys, and we hope you have a great time. For the rest of you, you can have a seat. Again, if you did not pick up a prayer guide yet, take this opportunity to do so, as we will be using that um, throughout the rest of of our time. A few announcements before we begin. Um, we, we've been talking about this for quite some time. Saturday, August 28th is going to be our next Safe to Sleep meal. Safe to Sleep is a local women's shelter we partner with on a regular basis. If you're interested in preparing a dish to share or helping serve that meal, you can talk to Jane. Jane, if you want to wave, she's at the back near the door. Um, talk to her if you're interested in getting more information about that. Uh, this Wednesday, we will not have our midweek prayer service, um, and then we'll resume that the following week. Uh, as always, if you're interested in finding a place to volunteer during our Sunday morning gatherings, let me or Austin know. We have several opportunities from the audiovisual room to Kids Church. Um, also, personal one, well, it's not personal, it's for, for the congregation, but, but it would help me out. Um, if anybody is really skilled with installing kitchen appliances, let me know, because we have some kitchen appliances to install in, in the coming month. So um, we also wanted to, they're, they're not here today for obvious reasons, but we wanted to say welcome to Everett Gertzen. Claire and Nathan just had their baby this week. Um, so keep your eye out for a meal train. Um, we'll be posting information about that. Um, if you don't see a post about it but you want to help out, talk to Nanette and she can get you the information. There's also the, the potential of need for help for um, the Carters, missionaries that we support to Japan, Jane and Mark's kids. And they have departed, right? They're heading, are they in Japan? Have they arrived? And there is going to be a container filled with equipment and supplies that is going to be following them, but they need some help packing that up. If you're interested in finding out more details and helping in that way, talk to Mark. What Do you know what day that is? Not yet? Oh. Okay. So sometime in the next month, if you have some availability throughout the day, um, and you'd be interested in helping with that, talk to Mark and he can get you more details. Sound good? Great. So prayer. That's what we're going to be doing today together. Un unquestionably, prayer is an essential part of the Christian life. Uh, a non-negotiable, uh, so to speak. I if we are to be followers of Jesus, seeking to grow in our devotion to him, seeking to learn his ways, to be shaped by him, we undoubtedly have to become people who are accustomed to prayer. And yet I think many would agree, I, I would acknowledge this in my own life, that at times prayer can be quite challenging uh, for a variety of reasons. It can be challenging to find the time because of our busy schedules. We have so many things that we are trying to take care of. And 
And a lot of times prayer can just get pushed to the back burner. I've noticed that to be true in my life. Um, or maybe you find yourself in a maybe prolonged season of um, doubt or a complicated spiritual journey. I think in those seasons, and again, I, I speak from experience with this, that in those seasons, when I've endured those seasons, it has been really difficult to be consistently devoted to a life of prayer. So while we, I think, would all acknowledge that it is undeniably an essential part of the spiritual life, it is also can be quite a daunting prospect. So this is actually one of the benefits that I have personally found in a prayer guide like the one you are holding. It has helped me learn how to pray over the years. I mentioned we've been using this for over six years now. It has helped shape me in the ways of prayer. It has also given me a foundation to stand on when I was in a, a season where I could not muster up the will or the strength to pray. This has provided a starting place, at least something that I can sort of cling to and move forward with. It, it has also, I think, helped me and continues to help me learn how to pray, which is important, learning how to pray. I, I mean, we, we can look at the, the life of Jesus. He teaches his followers how to pray. Uh, there's this assumption that it's not just going to be an innate. A and of course, there are moments where our prayer just sort of rushes forth in this spontaneous and maybe even emotionally charged way. And, you know, as a good Pentecostal, I think that's appropriate. Um, and maybe I'm not a good Pentecostal, I don't know. But I, I do think that's appropriate. I think that is not only appropriate, but I think it's an important part of prayer to have those moments where we are just even emotionally bearing our hearts and our souls before God in, in brutal honesty, even if that is quite difficult. But there is also room for us to learn how to pray. And one of the primary goals in prayer is that we might live into the fullness of Christ, into the fullness of his life. It, prayer is not about us attempting to twist God's arm. It's not about us just trying to get something that we think we want or we think we need out of God. It's not even attempting to increase our piety for the sake of increased feelings of self-righteousness or something like that. You know, Henry Nouwen, who has so many wonderful reflections on prayer, he, he put it this way. He said, prayer is not a pious decoration of life, but the breath of human existence. It's not an add-on. It's not a decoration to the spiritual life. It is the sustaining breath of life. This is what provides that source um, for the life of Christ that we are living into. So we're, we're going to work through this prayer guide. Many of these prayers will be familiar for many of you, even if you haven't attended one of our midweek prayer services. Um, that being said, the prayers that you find in this guide are not prayers that we have written or developed. Um, these are prayers that have been written and prayed by many who have come before us over the centuries. And, you know, I think that's, th there's something really important in engaging in this type of prayer as well. Um, and, and so we're grateful for these resources. You know, last week we talked, we're, we're spending some time looking at Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to pick that back up in two weeks from today. But last week we talked about Paul urging his audience to maintain uh, the unity of the spirit and, and the bond of peace. And we considered the importance of unity within the body of Christ, not just unity in, in a local small congregation like ours, although that is important, but unity within the larger body of Christ. A and we talked about that mysterious connection that we have as followers of Jesus, not just with Christians around the world today, but also Christians 
throughout all of the, the history of the church. There is a connection. We are brothers and sisters, even with those who have gone before us. And one of the benefits, I think, of praying prayers like this is, is that it's, it, it can serve as a reminder that we are connected, that we are a part of this ancient tradition, that we're not just here in the 21st century figuring this out on our own, but we're joining in with the witness of, of Christians over the centuries, and they can serve as guides for us as we continue to pursue Jesus today. Furthermore, the structure of these prayers, so the prayers we didn't write or develop, the structure of this prayer service is also not something that we developed. Uh, this is something that we were um, introduced to at a prayer session at a conference, uh, again, over six years ago, and then we, we implemented it and have been using it ever since. I actually think several ha have participated in the same prayer school. Zach, I think you, you all participated in that. Um, so this probably looks very familiar to you, right? Um, so even the structure uh, of this prayer service is not something we developed, but something that we are gleaning from others. A at that conference, in that prayer session, Brian Zond said this of liturgy and prayers like the ones that we're going to be using today. He said that we need prayers that are wiser than we are. We need prayers that are wiser than we are. This is why. Because if I am left to my own devices, my prayers, and I've, I've seen this to be true, my prayers are almost always going to mimic or mirror my personality. He said this, that anxious people tend to pray anxious prayers. Angry people tend to pray angry prayers, so on and so forth. Maybe you could think about some of your personality traits and, and determine whether or not that influences how you approach prayer. In my experience, it, it certainly has. And if that's the case, we might need something that helps break us out of our own patterns of mind that can be fairly restricting at times, which seems counterintuitive, right? It seems that always only ever resorting to spontaneous moments of prayer and, and just letting prayer flow with, with whatever I happen to be thinking in the moment, it seems that that would lead to the freest form of prayer but in my experience, that hasn't been the case because I always get in that same rut where, well, I'm just going to rehearse everything that I happen to be worried about in this moment. And that becomes what my entire prayer life is about. And so what seems to be a freeing approach to prayer actually becomes really restrictive. And I am limited to but by these features of my personality. And I think at times we need something that helps break us out of that in order that we might be opened up to the fullness and to the beauty of life-giving prayer. And so hopefully, if this is the first time you've worked through something like this, my, my hope and my prayer is that, that you will find at, at least that benefit. Um, maybe this won't become something that you incorporate into your daily prayer routine, and that's fine, although Speaking from personal experience, it has been really enriching and life-giving for me. Um, and so my hope and prayer is that not only will this half hour be that for us, uh, but that this might continue to be a resource in your life of prayer that you can glean from, maybe even over the years. So with that being said, we pray with Julian of Norwich who said, O oh God, O oh God of your goodness, give me yourself, for you are enough for me. We're going to begin, and you'll notice throughout this prayer guide, there are some sections where the word congregation is listed beside it in parentheses. Whenever you find that, if you join us verbally, um, that would be great, or if you find something printed in bold. That, that is also indic indicative of something that you can join. And, and to be honest, you can join verbally anytime you want. That, that's fine as well. 
But we are going to begin by focusing not on ourselves. We, we begin not by focusing on what we are trying to get out of God. We begin by simply focusing on God and his goodness, who he is. And so we pray, Father God, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Israel, God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, true and living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, have mercy and hear our prayer. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Before we continue with the next prayer of confession, I do just want to say a word about the prayer that we just voiced together, what is listed as the Jesus prayer in this guide. We're actually going to be voicing this together several more times throughout the service this morning. And I think this really simple prayer can serve as an important reminder that prayer does not have to begin with a complex theological treatise about what we believe about the goodness and greatness of God. Well, of course, that is uh, a beneficial part of prayer as well. And I, I believe that theology is important in prayer, that, that praying prayers that are rooted in historic Christian orthodoxy, I think that is critical. I think it builds our faith. But we don't have to begin there. We don't have to begin uh, from a place of having every theological issue or question settled before we can pray, which is good news for us, because that is an impossibility. Uh, we, we are never going to have every theological issue or question settled, um, be because our understanding of God is always growing. And, and if you can look back, if you've been following Jesus for a matter of years, I, I would imagine that everybody in here can look back maybe five or ten years in the past and find ways in which your understanding of God has shifted, or maybe you've experienced some fairly significant theological shifts over the years. And if that's the case in your past, there's, you know, it's likely that that may happen again. So prayer is not dependent on being able to assume that, that we have landed on the precise, perfect theology, um, that, that we have some level of certainty about all, all of our theological thoughts, um, we, we can begin from a simple place like this. And in fact, John Cashin, who is a monk in the Eastern Church, advised in this way. He said, let your prayer be frequent and brief, which I understand that's not a very Pentecostal encouragement, but I think it's good. Let, let your prayer be frequent and brief. And here are some examples he suggested, prayers that have helped me and continue to shape my prayer life. One that we've just voiced together, the Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Another one that we voiced a few minutes ago as we began, O Lord, make haste to help us. Both of those prayers uh, I have incorporated into my prayer life. They give shape to, to my prayer life. Often, whenever I become aware of God's presence, wh whatever I happen to be doing, maybe I'm driving across town or maybe standing in line at the DMV, which is probably the most appropriate place for the prayer, oh, Lord, make haste to help us. But wherever I, I happen to be, I often begin here one of these 
really short, accessible prayers. They're obviously really short. They're really easy to commit to memory. They can become ingrained in us. They're also short enough that they can be voiced in virtually any scenario, even when time is lacking. And I think in a way they become for us portable prayers that, that we can carry with us. I, I, don't, I don't know, maybe Landon, you know, if, C. F., if it was C.S. Lewis who talked about portable prayers. Somebody I recently read was talking about portable prayers that, that we can sort of carry along with us um, to use in those moments where we, we don't have time to enter a prolonged, lengthy period of prayer. Um, often when I either don't know how to pray or can't muster the strength to utter a spontaneous prayer, um, often this is where I begin. And it's you know, that, that Jesus prayer, oh Lord, or uh, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's when, when we utter that prayer, we are not trying to remind God to do something that he's not inclined to do. Um, we're, we're reminding ourselves. In fact, uh, Frederica Matthews Green, she wrote a little book called Praying the Jesus Prayer. Uh, it's really short <laughs> because the prayer is so short, but the whole book is devoted to this little prayer. And she said this of this prayer, that it's not us reminding God. She said, God doesn't need us to remind him to be merciful. He is merciful all the time, even when we don't ask. But unless we make a habit of asking for mercy, we forget that we need it. Ego builds a cardboard fortress that humility must every day tear down. God doesn't need to be reminded, but I often need to be reminded of my need for God's mercy. And with that in mind, we continue in that vein with the next prayer, our confession of sin. I'd invite you to join me in this. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Steve, I'll invite you to read our psalm for today, Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. For it is pleasant, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcast of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is the Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes the grass grow on the hills. He gives to the beasts their food and to the young ravens that cry. His delight is not in the strength of, strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise, the, praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He makes peace in your borders. He fills you with the finest of the wheat. He sends out his commands to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down his crystals of ice 
like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statues and rules to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his rule. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Brother Ben. And Steve, if you'd come and read our gospel text for today from John 6. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the blood of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever can eat of my flesh and drink of my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever can eat of my flesh and drink of my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not as the Father gave me back. Whoever eats on this bread will live forever. And he said these things to confirm them all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we join together in affirming our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Wendy, if you'd come and lead us through these psalms. Psalm 22. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 99, 1 and 2. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good and fills you with overwhelming kindness. And now we join together in praying as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on us, Jesus. We want to take time today to pray on behalf of those in our congregation who are in need. Um, so there are several needs that we have, but before we do that, I, I just wanted to open it up. If you have a need that you would like to share with us, I wanted to give you an opportunity to do that. Um, so now we're really getting Pentecostal, right? Any, anybody have a need? Steve? We will uh, continue to pray for Steve and Angie as they continue to grieve. And for Sovereign Grace Baptist Church, the church that his dad pastored. Anybody else? We, we want to continue to pray for um, those who have recently welcomed babies, um, so Brandon and Morgan Goodwin, little Nona, who is just a few weeks old at this point, and Claire and Nathan Gertzen, um, who just welcomed Everett just a few days ago, and we'll continue to pray for Hope and Davis, um, and Ross and Lindy, which I think is, this is not a only a prayer request, but an announcement, I guess, so. Congratulations. We'll, we'll pray for Ross and Lindy as well. We'll pray for the Carter family, um, missionaries to Japan who are have just arrived back in Japan after over a year or around a year in the States. And, um, and we'll also pray for Chastity, Lee and David. Um, when, when do you all, or when do you head back? Two weeks. Um, Chastity and her husband David are church planters in the UK, um, and so we'll pray for them as well. We'll continue to pray for Laura Van Dolsen. Um, Jen, are you here? Yeah, there you are. Um, pray that uh, as you're attempting to find solutions for diet, something that works for you, we'll pray toward that end and strengthen your body limited symptoms and continue to lift Laura up. Anybody else? Pray for Destin and Nancy's um, five-year-old nephew, Bobby, who was recently diagnosed with leukemia um, and is just beginning what will be a two-year uh, period of treatment. Um, pray for Bobby's parents, Krista and Tony, as well. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. We'll pray for Daniel's wife, and that she'd be strengthened in her body. And is your wife's name Bethany? Is that right? Okay. Just wanted to make sure before I... Okay. Anybody else? We also want to pray for students and teachers who are preparing to return to school. S many are preparing to return to school. Uh, pray for Rebecca. Um, if you are preparing to enter another challenging year of leading, leading your staff at Weller Elementary. Um, and other teachers in our congregation. Teachers, that's right. Anybody else before we join together in prayer? All right, well, let's, let's lift these needs to our God. Oh God, we ask in your goodness to comfort and sustain all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, 
need, sickness, or any other adversity. Today we pray especially for those who have recently welcomed new babies. We pray for Brandon and Morgan and little Nona. We pray for Nathan and Claire and Everett. We thank you for the gift of life that you have blessed those families with and the joy that they are experiencing in these first few weeks. We pray for continued health and safety. And we also, toward that end, pray for Ross and Lindy and for Hope and Davis as they are either beginning or nearing uh, the arrival of their babies. We pray for continued health, especially for these moms. We pray for health for their babies. And as they, in the future, transition to these new realities in their families, we pray that they would experience your grace in special and new ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the Carters, missionaries to Japan. We pray that as they have returned to Japan after an extended stay here in the States, that they would get acclimated quickly and be able to hit the ground running, doing the work you have called them to there. We also pray for Chastity and David and for the congregation they lead. We pray that you would strengthen them for that task, that where they are worn down emotionally or mentally or maybe even physically, that they would experience your sustaining hand. We pray that you would bless that congregation. Lord, we also lift up Laura Van Dolsen. Continue to pray for her. And as she's experiencing somewhat new or at least more challenging issues with figuring out what will work with her diet um, to help keep symptoms at bay or to at least lessen the severity, we pray for your guiding hand in that process. Pray for healing, that you would touch her body She would strengthen her body and her mind and her soul. Encourage her today, we pray. We continue to pray for Steve and Angie as they grieve the loss of Steve's dad. We trust that you are our comforter, Holy Spirit. We pray that Steve and Angie would know your peace and your comfort in this moment. We also pray for this congregation for Sovereign Grace Baptist Church here in town. As they've had a, a difficult couple of months, we pray for your peace. We lift up Bethany, Daniel's wife, who deals with chronic illness and is not doing well today. Pray for strength in her body. Pray that you would reduce whatever symptoms she is feeling in this moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up all teachers and students in our congregation and around our city who are returning to the classroom or to online learning we pray for strength, whatever decisions have been made for each family. Um, we know that those decisions were not made lightly, and we pray that you would bless those students, that they would have an enriching year of education, that they would succeed even in spite of all of the hurdles placed in front of them. We pray for teachers, and administrators, pray for the Manuses as they're preparing for another semester. We lift up Rebecca Donaldson as she prepares to leave her staff and faculty for another year that is going to be challenging. 
if you strengthen her. I think Nancy Bartley and the other teachers in our congregation, Lord, bless them. We ask for a smooth school year. Lord, in all of these things, we, we again, just as we pray for mercy, we acknowledge that we are not informing you of our need for mercy. And even here, we are not informing you of these needs. But we trust that you are well aware of all of the needs that have been voiced today and all of the needs that haven't been voiced but are undoubtedly represented in this room. Lord, we pray that you would meet your people, that you would sustain our lives. And as we experience need, which we will for the rest of our lives, we pray that our trust in you would grow. Teach us to trust you, Jesus. We pray all of these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We're, we're going to spend just a few moments in silence. And this may be the one of the most unfamiliar parts of this service for some as we find it so difficult to stop talking or to turn noise off. And we want to do just that, just for a few minutes. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about this before, but Rich Velotis, who pastors a church in New York, um, offered this advice for people who are interested in growing in prayer. He said to normalize boredom and to befriend silence, which again is probably um, not typical Pentecostal advice when it comes to prayer. But again, I think it's really important advice to, to befriend silence. He, he recently said this, Velotis. He, he said, we need regular times of silent contemplative prayer because it helps us to move beyond relating to God in transactional utilitarian ways. If prayer is about simply experiencing and enjoying the presence of our God, I think silence can for us become a crucial part of that. As we sit and learn to trust, there's nothing I have to say to get God to act, but I can shut my mouth for a few minutes enter into silence and trust Jesus. You know, Rowan Williams has said that Christian life is a listening life. And we can't grow in, in terms of a listening life if we don't befriend silence. So we're going to do just that. We're going to have a few moments of just silence. Lord Jesus, you stretched out your arms of love upon the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. Jane, if you want to join us. Jane is going to lead us through the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. 
Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are per persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. of the earth and sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Warren, if you join us. divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying to self that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. And our prayer for the week, keep your church, O Lord, by your perpetual mercy, and because without you, the frailty of our nature causes us to fall, keep us from all things hurtful and lead us to all things profitable for our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessing of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but with our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Would you join me as we pray for mercy? Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And if we join together in confessing the mystery of our faith today that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Amen. Amen. I pray that you go into this next week feeling refreshed. pray that you go in God's grace and peace. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. Thanks for being here today. Hope this was a, a meaningful time of prayer. Amen. Love you.